My name is Antonio Fortunato and I work at the European Astronaut Center as Deputy Team Lead for Crew Operations. Now, one uh, final contribution I want to mention here are the multipurpose logistic modules. Uh, as you can imagine, during the assembly of the space station, there wasn't just a need to bring up uh, modules or solar panels or pieces of the integrated truss. There was also a need to bring equipment, to bring racks, experiments, and uh, the multipurpose logistic modules have been uh, one of the major ways to deliver all this hardware to the ISS. The MPLMs were launched in the cargo bay of the space shuttle, filled with whatever was needed on station, then attached to the space station for the duration of the mission, and uh, immediately before the shuttle would dedock, it would be also filled with the equipment that needed to be returned on Earth, detached from the station and put back in the cargo bay of the space shuttle. Now, shortly before the shuttle fleet, was actually retired in 2011, it was deemed necessary to leave one of those MPLMs permanently attached to the station. Actually, one of the biggest problems that uh, uh, the space station faces is the amount of hardware that is on board. There is simply not enough space to comfortably manage all the stuff that's on board. So to add an additional module whose only purpose was to store stuff inside was a very welcome idea. And that's how one of the MPLMs, Leonardo specifically, was changed into a permanent multipurpose module or PMM. And the PMM is currently attached to the Nadir facing port of the Node 1. Now, there are some other contributions that uh, Europe has provided to the ISS program, but what is probably most significant, Europe didn't just provide hardware to the ISS. Europe also provided the incredible expertise of its astronauts. I put in the slide here the names and the missions of the astronauts that have flown to the ISS since station assembly began. Obviously, I don't want to go through each and uh, every one of those missions. I just want to point out, for the sake of statistics, but also with a little bit of pride, that uh, Europe has contributed with 20 astronaut missions for the assembly, maintenance, and uh, operations of the ISS. Cumulatively, astronauts from Europe have spent 1,249 days in space, and they have performed 12 EVAs. After the assembly was complete, we could finally focus on the utilization of the station and uh, the missions that serve full utilization of the stations are very different from what was flown in the past. So what does a standard mission look like? Well, normally we are talking about a six month flight. We're talking a flight, we're talking about a flight that spans across two increments where an increment is defined as the period of time spanning between two subsequent undockings of a Soyuz vehicle. And obviously, after the station assembly was declared complete, we knew that we would operate the station likely at least up to 2020. And so we knew how many of those long duration missions, as they are called, we would have to fly. We also knew how much each international partner has contributed to uh, the station and the program. So we knew how many missions each international partner would be assigned in those rough first 10 years of full utilization of the space station. Here you see a nice picture from uh, 2009. You have uh, crew members from the permanent ISS crew sharing a meal with the um, visiting crew from the space shuttle that was docked at that point in time to the ISS. Now, once the crew gets to the space station, what do they do? Well, obviously the main reason why the ISS is in space is science, research. A lot of time is spent by the astronauts from the ISS performing science, 
especially human life science experiments, but also experiments in other fields like uh, material science or biology or simple technological demonstrations or demonstrations of the efficiency of certain operational strategies. One of the objectives and one of the uses of the space station program is to actually serve as a testbed for future exploration missions. And uh, you see here one such piece of equipment. This is the Microgravity Science Glove Box or MSG. The MSG is the largest glove box available on the space station, but it can also be used for um, providing basic services to experiments that do not necessarily require uh, the containment of a glove box. And uh, you see here Paolo Nespoli during his last mission working on one such experiment. Also the US lab hosts some exercise equipment. Here you see Alexander Gerst exercising on the uh, cycloergometer. It is known as CIVIS. You see here the uh, inside of the so-called WHC cabin or water and hygiene compartment. The US toilet and toilet in general is important not just because it uh, uh, allows to manage the human waste, um, but it is also important because it is connected to the so-called regenerative life support system. After the retirement of the space shuttle, we will not be able to support a crew complement of six people if we weren't able to recycle the water that is being used on board. And if we weren't able, in other words, to take the condensate water from the air and the urine produced by the astronauts, purify it and uh, turn it into drinking water. As mentioned, we are also able to perform echography. This is important not just for science, but also for um, operational medicine reasons. Of course, science is not the only activity that's performed on station. A big amount of time is also spent on system maintenance. And uh, you see here just, uh, just another example. This is, uh, is astronaut Luca Parmitano installing a hydrocyclone on uh, one of the Columbus water pumps. And uh, this hydrocyclone is actually used to remove gas bubbles that might have formed inside the cooling loops internal of the Columbus module. Now, other activities that are performed in space are Robotics, this is what we mentioned before. Robotics is a big part of um, an astronaut's everyday life on the ISS. We have uh, vehicle dockings, and vehicle dockings actually happen quite often recently. And most of those vehicle dockings are performed by robotics. And you can see here a picture of a, a captured HTV on its way to be birthed to the ISS. Also, one activity that is occurring more and more often are uh, extravehicular activities. Of course, there were a lot of EVAs just to build and maintain the ISS. We had about 175 EVAs since the beginning of the program. Now, the thing is, systems fail and systems that are outside fail as well. And when this happens, usually the astronauts have to go outside and perform repairs. And sometimes the repairs must be done relatively quickly because the system that has failed uh, might have a specific impact on the overall station operations. One uh, very good example is the failure of uh, one of the pump modules that are outside the ISS. This failure happened in summer of 2010, and uh, it was a pretty bad thing because without that pump, we weren't able to circulate the ammonia, so we weren't able to cool down the half of the loads on the US side of the space station. 
And if you cannot cool down something, obviously you cannot power it up because if it power it up and it doesn't dissipate heat, then it burns. Of course, this wasn't a very um, favorable situation and uh, an EVA had to be organized in a very short time frame. And uh, NASA astronauts uh, Doug Willock and uh, Tracy Caldwell Dyson perform actually those three EVAs where the pump module, the failed pump module was extracted, set apart, and the new pump module was put in place. Very successful operation. There were again a number of hiccups in usually the areas where you don't expect them. There was uh, one QD that uh, quick disconnect that uh, didn't exactly work properly. And uh, also there were some bolts retaining the pump module in place that uh, were a little bit more stubborn than we hoped they would be. This is another nice picture of uh, an astronaut preparing to perform a repair on one of the station solar panels. And you see also here the important synergies between extravehicular activities and robotics. For an activity like this, it would be extremely difficult for the astronaut to translate to that point and uh, attach safely and perform its repairs. While with the robotic arm, it's relatively simple to just extend the arm up to a point where the astronaut can work directly on the solar panel. Now, last but not least, an important activity <clears throat> that's done by the astronauts on board the ISS is outreach and public relations. The ISS program is a big program is a program that involves many nations. And it is a program that is also often uh, given for granted. People not always remember how amazing and what is the meaning of having such an incredible spacecraft orbiting Earth. Sometimes the impact of the science that's performed on board the ISS is not as visible because, for instance, it relates to questions that are uh, in fundamental science, and those questions do not necessarily translate into uh, visible products, into visible outcomes in a very short time. So it is very important that the astronauts actually engage in those outreach activities, connect, for instance, with their communities of origin, and explain the beauty and the usefulness of human spaceflight to people. Hope you enjoyed.